Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Softkey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. So we've got a bit of a backlog of team digs to get through. So starting this week and for every other week following, we are going to be doing nothing but team digs. So here's what our diggers have for week 222. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up, James Dunn and Justin Hewlett have dug up win games backslash og backslash space w. Well, clearly something to do with space. At least that's what I would assume with a name like Space W. Um, 173 kilobytes, so not too small. Uh, no conversion. So Space Walls. This is a game written for fun only. <laughs> If you use this game for any kind of productivity, you're disobeying the, the, what do you call it, the true nature of the game? Or the spirit of the game? I don't know. If you enjoy or you have any comments, please let me know. Send an email copy your address. Object of the game is to shoot the center of the rotating walls, avoid flying into the walls, or being hit by the two defending saucers. Yo. <laughs> I don't know why it says yo at the end there. Um, maybe there was more to this and it just kind of got cut off when it was like copy pasting or something. So we can face our ship in multiple directions, space to shoot a bullet, and A, accelerate ship each time pressed. Huh. And I like how it's making a differentiation that it can be either a capital A or a small A, which is <laughs> kind of weird. Um, there doesn't seem to be any registration or author info in here. He's got like a copy server address, but not a name. Probably be in the program itself. So Space Walls by Adam Taub. Or Tobe. Tob Tobe. Taub. I'm bad at pronouncing. Anyway, space button. Okay, that was a little weird. Space wasn't doing anything, but clicking the mouse did work. Um Yeah, that's weird. The keyboard controls don't work, but the mouse controls do. Huh. Unless it has to be, like, numeric keypad? No, the keyboard controls don't work at all. Unless you have to actually, like, turn the keyboard controls on. Well, there's supposed to be a settings window, but I can't get that to show up either. I can't get the about to show up either. Okay, now it works. Okay, input keyboard, um, acceleration, I guess medium, friction, medium, I don't know. <laughs> uh, help. Okay, help brings up this information. And about, yeah, I think we got some freeware here because I'm not seeing any registration details or anything. Okay, so I've got it in keyboard control now. So, spacebar. Okay, now it's sort of working um oh <laughs> so the arrow keys just affect your facing direction and then you actually have to push the a key to gain momentum in that direction kind of weird but whatever oh and you can only have one shot on the screen at a time Okay, so apart from the fact that you can only have one shot on the screen at a time, and the fact that <laughs> everything is really tiny, um, the game seems straightforward enough. I almost feel like I've seen something like this on like a Vectrix or something. I'm still getting used to the fact that you have can only have one shot in the air at a time. It makes it surprisingly... Because you just want to keep firing, right? But the problem is you can't just keep firing. And those chaser things that are following along. I'm guessing that touching them is bad, and I can't shoot them. If I try to shoot them, my shot just doesn't do anything. I mean, so far it does, it's not really that hard. It's just a lot, a lot of time wasted trying to shoot these things. Okay, that's gotta do it. Right? Yeah! Wall destroyed, or core destroyed? I don't know. And suddenly everything's moving a lot faster. <laughs> Level 2's not messing around. And yet my bullets are still really slow. <laughs> okay, so that was Space Walls. Um, <laughs> this game is actually... It's interesting. The controls are 
unusual, but at least they work. I'm just sort of like tapping A anytime I want to like gain some momentum, like immediately after hitting other keys. So the controls are a little unusual, but at least they work. Although it is strange that you have to, if you set keyboard controls, the mouse controls don't even work at all and vice versa. And then on top of that, you have the whole thing with the menu options up there. You can select them, but they don't do anything if the game's at playing. Like, the game has to be in a stop state before the menu options do anything. I mean, given that this is a free title, there's really not a lot to complain about here. So, as a free title, this is fine. Next up, Michael Madsen, Cleverly Blonde, and Rune Fox have dug up win games backslash misc backslash SCPAPST. I don't have a clue. <laughs> For some reason, this is making me think of like escape, but that can't be it. Oh, geez, it's only a 30 kilobyte file. That's not, that doesn't bode well. Scissors, paper, stone, computerized version of the classic children's game. Okay. So, is that literally all it's going to be? I mean, I know it as rock, paper, si scissors, but... <laughs> okay, um, this is a very small window, and apparently it has a maximize button for some reason. We'll see if that actually does anything in a moment. But we got an about here. So, copyright 91 by David McIntosh. So, not Macintosh, but McIntosh. Um, program is freeware, you may just continue to use it without charge, You'd like to see source code in the latest version, then send ton dollars. Okay then. So it's kind of interesting, we've already hit two freeware programs in one go, usually it's shareware. So I'm guessing if I just pick one of these, then it just picks the opposite on the other side. Okay, does it maximize? Of course it doesn't. <laughs> This did not need to have a maximize button. This is so small. So I'm going to try scissors again. And I lost. I'm going to try stone. Tie game. I'm going to try stone again. I win. I'm going to try paper. I lost. Paper again. Tie game. Paper again. Still a tie. Stone. I win. So yeah, you just pick one of these. The computer picks another at random. And there you go. <laughs> it's that's, that's That's all this thing does. <laughs> Yeah, good thing you're not charging money for this. And actually, ten dollars for the source code is probably um, fair, because some even something as basic as this, a person who's trying to get into programming might not understand some of the concepts behind doing some of the things that are happening here. But yeah, it's a that's all this thing does. You you click these and you get results. That's literally it. Next, Jonathan Gosselin and JP Ronnie have dug up DOS games backslash PB backslash MP ball one. Well, clearly some kind of pinball thing, judging by the folder. Um, centerfielder.com? Okay, I got a funny feeling this is another one of those pinball things made with pinball construction sets. Um, let's just quickly type pinball.doc. I'm guessing it's probably just some basic controls. Yep. Okay, so what was the executable comp file again? Center fielder. Oh yeah, it's one of these. Um, that's a very weird layout. Um. <laughs> okay. Huh. Well, let's see how this plays. Oh, right, it plays way too fast. <laughs> I gotta turn the cycles down. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, so it's like the ball, okay, so the ball just sort of drops into play from the pitcher and sort of sits between the flippers and, <laughs> well, that wouldn't happen in real life. Um, okay, <laughs> I guess I gotta start again. Okay, there we go. So, I'm not entirely certain, like... I almost got the impression that this is supposed to be played with, like, some additional rules on top of what we're seeing here. Just based on the fact that you've got, like, your out as things that you can actually hit. 
Oh, and take a look at that. They actually use the gobble hole as like the pitching mitt or the the mitt there in the center of the field. Interesting. Um <laughs> I think the ball might be stuck in an infinite loop. Oh no, there it goes. <laughs> Almost an infinite loop. So it's actually kind of clever the way this has been done. But at the same time, it's a little tricky to understand what's going on here. Fun fact though, there are um, pinball tables out there that are based on sports that have some interesting scoring systems to them. Like I'm, I can't remember the name of, uh, I can't remember the name of the basketball one offhand. But there's a basketball one that actually uses like standard, standard sort of like scoring. So you like two points and three points depending on the kind of shots you're making, which is weird for a pinball game. But at the same time, kind of makes sense, right? Also, there's a kind of thing that... Oh, I can't remember the name of these at the moment. But there's a kind of machine that sort of takes after pinball machines. I think it's like a pitch and bat machine or something like that. But it's basically like a ball is launched. And then the player has a button that controls a bat that's on the at the bottom of the play field. And then, depending on where the ball goes, like there's like a whole range of targets at the back. And depending on what target the ball hits at the back depends on what happens. Like if you get like, if you make like one base, if you make it two bases, if you if you get a foul ball, if you go out, stuff like that. Or home run is usually like dead center. So I've never actually played one of those, but I have seen them. So I know they exist. So yeah, center fielder, one of the more unique pinball construction set pinball tables I have seen to date, even though it kind of plays a little weird. <laughs> and our last dig for today is from Anonymous Freak and Zed Supremus. DOS games backslash adventure backslash H Manor. I'm gonna guess this stands for Haunted Manor. Um, we got a hints, we got a manor.doc, manor.exe. Very small, so I'm guessing a text adventure. So let's just quickly go edit manor.doc. So as I write, Haunted Manor, Hampton Manor. Has a, had a dark history, murder, suicide, disappearances have gone on for almost 100 years. Okay, so it might as well be Haunted Manor at that rate. <laughs> Even as an author of horror, you feel a little uneasy. You've had nightmares about the place, and some of them seem a little too real. The last family to have lived there disappeared a little over seven years ago. Since then, the manor has remained empty. Your publicist, Charlie, was the last person to have been... Wait, is that Charlie? Or Charl? Is it just Charl? Charlie should have an eye in it somewhere, shouldn't it? Hmm. The last person I've been in the manor, he was checking the place out in advance of your arrival. The doctors are still trying to help him. Oh, jeez. Oh, and it's saying over down here, and whatever you do, don't go in the basement. Uh-huh. That's your insta-kill? Anywho, this was made by an Art Lafrana, and wants $7 for it. Okay, so definitely going to be some kind of text adventure, so... Manor, Hampton Manor, Art Lafrana, Presenter Key, long time since you had a vacation. Well, it's not really a vacation, more of a retreat. You told your publicist you wanted to find a place with the right atmosphere for the horror novel you are writing. He really outdid himself this time. How he was able to get you Hampton Manor for a month's stay is beyond you. It is empty and was for sale until a judge took it off the market. Why would you do that? The last owners just disappeared, and since seven years have passed, the heirs are fighting it out in the courts. Okay, well, I guess that makes a little more sense. Manor has been on a few of those strange but true TV shows and has been written up in many similar magazines. Stopping in town, you asked about the place, and people became visibly upset. Now standing outside the gate, you can see why. You can get the feeling someone or something is watching you. Now if you can just remember where your secretary said they hid the key, you'll be all set. Taking a deep breath, you get ready to enter Hampton Manor. Okay, would you like instructions? Sure. Oh, well, text adventure, choose a direction to go. Okay, so the game recognizes north, south, north, south, east, west, up, or down. So we're not having to deal with diagonals here, which is probably a good thing. Um, okay, and it looks like it has proper text parsing. So even though you can do commands is just like simple two word things it will make sure to ignore words that are 
unnecessary. So hit Neil with hammer, something that works there, or just hit with hit hammer or something like that, maybe. <laughs> or hit, no, it says hit nail. Anyways, so you're standing outside an open gate. In the distance to the north is an old manor. The fence surrounds the estate. Near the gate is a brass plaque that reads Hampton Manor. Your little red sports car is here. Um, can we just get in the car? Please rephrase that. Um, car? <laughs> Sit car? I don't know. I, I want to go back to the car. Um, look car. Let's just do that. I can't even look at the car. Look plaque? Uh, maybe the car is not a valid object. No, it's still... Unless it's a capital thing? Look plaque. No, it's like... What am I supposed to do here? Does help work? Help doesn't work either. Can I quit? Okay, at least that works. Okay, I just noticed here that it says all room descriptions have everything you need to know. No need to examine everything in the room. So we're talking more of a we're talking more of a um, lightweight text adventure then, given that that description that we've just been given there is as much as we're allowed to have for this room. So I guess we just go north. Pebble path goes north towards the manor, path leads east and west, south is the gate. I'll keep going north. Signing on the front porch of an old manor. There's a porch swing lane on the porch, chains have rusted through. Have to unlock and open the door first. I'm guessing if we try to open the door, we must unlock the door first. But because we don't have the key, we must find the key. So... Well, if we can't look at things, then how do we know, like, where something is? Like, we can't just say get key because we don't know where that is. Okay, I went elsewhere. So, you're at the southwest corner of the yard. Fountains here. A fence bars your way to the west and south. To the north, it's a large tree. East is a worn path. Found must have been very pretty at one time. A couple birds scatter when you approach. Splash in the rainwater, collect at the bottom. Water is off. Looking inside the spout, something catches your eye. Try to get a better look, but it's just too far down in the spout. Yeah, the game is not... Because the game is looking for very specific actions and not really telling you a lot other than just some just basic descriptions of the setting, like how it says, it says you try to get a better look, it's just too far down in the spout for something that's inside the spout. But it's like, how do you determine what to do about that? Because usually in a text adventure, if there's some kind of situation like that, there's some way to sort of get an idea of what it is you have to do to approach that problem. But because we can't look at things, <laughs> we don't, we aren't able to get that extra information. Okay, maybe we could climb the tree here. You jump and just miss the first branch. That's not how you climb a tree. <laughs> maybe if I just go up? No, it still says you jump and miss the first branch. Nope, we're not getting up there. Yeah, and I don't like the fact that please rephrase that is the general error that it gives if it can't do something. So, like, I'm trying to go east, because it even says, to the east is the west wall of an old manor, but it won't let me go east, and it just says, please rephrase that. So, yeah, that's kind of annoying. So, yeah, that was Hampton Manor. It's, um... It's kind of a frustrating text adventure, because it doesn't really give you a lot to go on. Like, it has descriptions of everything, but you're not allowed to investigate deeper than that, which means you're almost, like, expected to know what you're supposed to do to win. And if you make a mistake, it doesn't tell you what the mistake is, unless it's something that you're supposed to be capable of doing. If it's not something you're supposed to be capable of doing, it just says, please rephrase that. And you don't have a clue, like, why you what you're doing wrong <laughs> so yeah it's just uh, it, it I, i've definitely played text adventures that work better than this one so this could have definitely used just some more polish to make it more like a typical text adventure in terms of the functionality like i'm sure the right the writing looks fine but it just needs some better functionality is what i'm getting at here